So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to welcome you to yet another episode of our Wimbledon career mode here on FIFA 18, the road to glory once again returns and we are back with another bumper packed episode once again today and I believe this should be the penultimate episode of the season overall before we hopefully, if all things go well, jump into a championship campaign. Regardless, taking a look at the calendar, you can see we're going to be playing Rochdale, Shrewsbury and Fleetwood all in the league, as well as Doncaster. If we get a bit of time, I might try and squeeze a fifth game in here against Scunthorpe, setting up a four-game finale. However, if the first four games of this episode are really action-packed, then obviously we might not have time to fit that in, and we'll just put it into the last episode of the season. So yeah, it really is crunch time, basically, in the season right now. One more good episode, and we should definitely be getting promoted into the championship. So if we can get even potentially three wins out of four in this episode, we've basically got it sewn up. First little bit of training then for this episode before we get into any action and as you can see it's the same players being trained as last time. Bolger, Shaw and Hartigan as well as Florence for now just for this slot and then we'll change it up after that. I'll take a look at your comments and see who you wanted me to train. For now though a little bit of a tribute growth there for Bolger and also for Morgan Shaw as well. Just about to play Rochdale and for the first time ever we've seen this message in this series. We've got a player going away on international duty. Unsurprisingly it's Roy Carroll for Northern Ireland. However in future we might have to expect this quite regularly when we build up a pretty decent side. Now I guess it's not much of a surprise in all honesty to see who won player of the episode last time. It was Joel Azoro. Obviously after his hat trick in that penultimate game there against Charlton. He was really going to be a big contender. Did Josh Larger getting quite a few votes as well, more than I expected, actually, to be honest with you, though. He was very solid. But it's Joel Azoro who wins it for a second time in a row, and he becomes the first player to actually win the award uh, in twice, sort of, two occasions back-to-back. -back. So Rochdale will be our first opponents of this episode, and we are going to be playing at this game away from home. I remember playing Rochdale at some point, but I can't remember what the result was. It might well have been quite a difficult one. We'll be hoping we can get past them with relative of ease though today. So Joel Azoro again the man in focus, the top goal scorer in the league at the moment in this League One season. He'll be hoping to grab the golden boot when it comes to its conclusion as well. We're facing Rochdale away from home. That is the immediate threat and the immediate focus. As I mentioned, one more good episode really and I think we've got it pretty much nailed down. Not going to get many more opportunities, especially if we move into a higher league. Some of the guys in this side, the likes of Joe Piggott and stuff. So they do need to start performing pretty soon if they're going to stay in the side. going to put this into a dangerous position here. It's onto the head of Joe Piggott and it is just wide of the post. Decent headed effort there from Joe Piggott. Aerial ability is something we've lacked really in this series. Got a very, very good opportunity here to take the lead with this free kick. Camps will take it. It's through the wall but thankfully deflects off it. Now here come Rochdale, Osha Larger though has got that one clear. Not very well though, this is now, oh Davies has got acres of space and can slot it past George Long and that is 1-0 to Rochdale. Unfortunately we are losing in this first game of the episode. It's really what we didn't need, but it fell to Davies. Just us not getting rid of the ball when we really should have done instead of trying to play it out. We do tend to play it out a lot, and we pretty much are 99% of the time successful. Rochdale have... Ro I can't even... We have not been bad in this game. Rochdale have just been sick. Like, I'm not even gonna beat around the bush. Rochdale have been very, very good. This is Bolger, though, who has been a shining light, in fairness, in this half. He's got Azoro running through. It's Joel Azoro who turns. Joel Azoro makes it 1-1 right on the edge of half time. You cannot give the Swede that sort of space. And he gets himself a goal. Set up by Aaron Bolger really nicely from the ex-Irish uh, Premiership player or the ex-Shamrock Rovers man to make the challenge, then play it through. The turn from Azoro to cut inside and then finesse it. If there's ever a time to score, that's probably it. The Rochdale manager had probably set up his team talk and now it gets thrown out of the window. I think that might well have been the first goal that Aaron Bolger has ever been involved in. Uh, either assist or goal. I don't mean, I don't say that in a bad uh, sense. He's not had many opportunities to, to do that really, especially as a holding mid. Dozel, I haven't seen much of Dozel actually in this game. I think he's just been quietly going about his business. Toko, that's now into Andre Dozel. Nice back heel. Azoro plays it back through to Dozel, and it is 2 1. What a well worked goal that is. Oh my word. Andre Dozel with the back heel. Azoro with the intricate ball through, and then drilled down into the bottom corner. 
from Andre Dozel. We've turned the game around. We were 1-0 down and a 1-2 between two of our new signings in the summer. Well, I say they're not even new anymore, but Dozel and Azoro combining and a lovely finish from Dozel down into that bottom corner. Dozel have been quite quiet in this game. He's not quiet anymore. He's got himself on the score sheet. Oh, Joe Pickett's made a really nice run. Joe Pickett has cut back. It is Joe Pickett and it is just wide that that should have been 3-1 even that should have been a two goal lead wrapped up there Rochdale still holds on to the ball with Rathbone that's now into Henderson dangerous territory here Osher larger though just manages to poke the ball away from the Rochdale attacker very nicely this is Rafferty oh he's got some space that's a great ball in for Davies and that is 2-2 two -two. you could see it coming no one marked him quite frankly it was a good ball in but as soon as the ball arrives in the area the man who's put it in is just not getting marked it's Osher larger who was so good last episode arguably has been at fault for both of the goals in this one which is very very rare only a couple of minutes left in this game we're into injury time so I think this will be the last chance of the game for either side Lyle Taylor Quezia Pai needs to pick out the right man it's in towards Azoro not a back to a pyre again. Still a pyre. Lovely cut back in the, towards Lyle Taylor. This time he went for the bicycle kick. Toko's there. Lyle Taylor with the acrobatic effort again. Oh my word. Can you imagine if that had found a top corner? Still the Silva Lopez challenge though and that's cleared away. I think Rochdale would have been complaining quite a lot if that had resulted in a goal because that was far over the allotted two minutes, but it does end as a draw. Joel Azoro wins the Man of the Match award there, narrowly ahead of the other goal scorer, Andre Dozel, who got a nine rating, and Zuzi Toko with an impressive one there as well, 8.2 for him, and a 9.1 for Aaron Bolger. Fair play to the Irishman, only 17, let's not forget. That's a very good rating at that age. Now, one thing I was meant to talk about at the start of this episode, I forgot to, so we're gonna do it now, uh, was the amount that this is getting uploaded. Now, this is still quite a consistent series, especially in comparison to other ones that I have done. Uh, but obviously, uh, it, was, it was highlighted as the top comment in the last video. I'm probably not going to finish the series if I continue uploading it at its current rate. Um, now, uh, I think one suggestion was to try and sim more games. Now, I'm not going to do that this season because we're close to the end. I want it to sort of carry on in its normal state. But I think when we do hopefully get to the championship or whatever next season brings, we will sim quite a few more games just so that we can really speed up the championship season or hopefully the championship season or whatever season two is, we can speed it up. Uh, on top of that, I'm currently at university, I'm in third year for those that don't know, so I'm working on dissertation stuff at the moment, which is why it's quite sporadic in comparison to when it first started. However, when I'm done with that, which will be mid-May, uh, I will be able to probably upload this series every two days, three days. So keep that in mind as well. Once we get to mid-May, this series will speed up dramatically in terms of the amount it's being uploaded. So just bear that in mind. It will hopefully speed up naturally. Don't worry about that. I am definitely determined to finish the series before FIFA 19 comes out. Now, I said I was going to mix things up in terms of training, but I am still quite happy with the players that are getting trained at the moment and the amount that they're getting in terms of training. I think everyone else is growing quite well. Hopefully, we'll see Bolger go up to 61 during this episode. He's very close to it. We might even see Shaw and and Hartigan go up as well. Game two now, and we're away from home against Shrewsbury, despite what the kits would suggest. Unfortunately for us, the Shrewsbury having to wear their away kit to avoid any sort of clash, because both of our kits would clash with their home one. There's the side in the background, relatively unchanged, but Appia, Nightingale, and Tamori are in. A win here, although not actually needed, is kind of needed, really. I think just to settle any late season nerves that we may have. There's still eight games to go, including this one. So if we were to grab all three points, here, I think that would definitely settle any sort of bottling mechanism this Wimbledon side might have. The gap that we had to Portsmouth is down to eight points because we only drew that last game there against Rochdale and clearly Portsmouth won. Oh, that's a good ball there in behind from Shrewsbury and it's just wide from, uh, I'm not, uh, Wally? I'm not entirely sure. We'll call him Wally after the uh, Pixar film. Lovely through ball though there in behind the, uh, or inside the centre back and massive get out of jail free card there because that was a very good chance for Shrewsbury. Dozel there. There, out wide now for De Silva Lopez. That's down the line for Joel Azoro, who could cut inside. This now is Andre Dozel, but it's straight at Henderson. Didn't really get the ball properly out of his feet to strike that well. Got an opportunity now of Shrewsbury here from the free kick. They're going to potentially lay this one off, are they? They do indeed. It needs someone to close it down, but George Long is thankfully able to parry over spectacularly. He managed to survive. A go-go there with the header, but goes out for a goal kick. Right, quick attack needed here with Dozel. 
Lovely 1-2, hopefully to himself and Lyle Taylor. Dorzell now with the shot, but saved by Henderson. And it won't even go out for a corner. Man, this has been this has been a difficult half. This has been a very, very difficult half indeed. It's come to its conclusion. Shrewsbury probably looked the most dangerous side overall. Lyle Taylor back to Azoro again. Nice cut back from him. That's into Lyle Taylor with the space now. Great save with the feet, though, by Henderson. Lyle Taylor did so, so well there to get in behind and just force his way through with the dribbling ability. And this now is Andre Dozel bursting through. It's still Dozel out wide to Azoro. Again, just not enough people involved in the attack imminently. De Silva Lopez so far back. Same for Apaya. Toko, Quezzi Apaya making the overlapping run. This is Quezzi Apaya. He's got support in the centre, but a vital toe. There from a Shrewsbury defender. A go -go. a great ball through to Morris, but blazed over the bar. Really big miss there from Shrewsbury. They seem to just do everything that we don't. Like, when we attack, they get back in numbers so quickly. And then when they attack, they've got so many people going forward. Like, they're a unit. It's not even as if they're attacking or defensive. They're just moving. They're just doing both as an actual cohesive unit. Whereas we go on a counter-attack and we just don't have anyone going forward with us. Look at this. Look at... Azoro's got nobody with him. It's an ultra-attacking. And Azoro was the only player in the final third for us. Like, still Godfrey. Parrots brought him down there. This is Morris now with the shot and it is just over the bar. George Long had absolutely no chance with that one. Rooted to the spot and we've got away with one again. We do not deserve a win in this game. We've just played so poorly and I don't feel like I've done anything wrong. The AI players have just been poor. It's a nil-nil draw. Shrewsbury played really well in the first half but in the second half they were kind of average. And then we became average to match them. It was really poor. Very frustrating match there. And Zuzi Toko at least was man of the match. That's a bit of a bonus. 8.5. Uh, Fikeo Tomori, Andre Dozel getting good ratings as well, but when we need to win games, to see that lack of attacking impetus was quite disappointing, especially with pretty much our best starting 11 out on the pitch at the time. You can see that Portsmouth picked up yet another win. That means they're only six points away from us now in third place, so we're under pressure suddenly. Well, if I could train my players in how to attack more, then I would, but unfortunately we can't do that, so we're going to stick with what we've been doing in training in this episode. And you can see that three of the four players being trained have gone up in overall. Aaron Bolger is now 61, Morgan Shaw is now 56, and Anthony Hartigan is now 60. Scare reports are back then for this one. I think we'll probably get another one next episode, but this has got the scouted players that we have for this episode. As you can see, we've got Pekko Kuikunen back from Finland, and does it look as if he's got anyone back? Yeah, this Kimo Joel guy's alright, but probably not good enough. We've also got our English scout back in Scotland. Dave McColl was on this list last time, and he's still extremely good, but this potential has actually risen. I think it was 70 to 94 last time. So Dave McColl, who's been scouted for two months now, he is going to be signed up to the Youth Academy. So this right now is how the Youth Academy is looking. We've got five players in here at the moment. Sulo Joel from Finland, who's probably got the worst potential out of all of them. He might not stay, especially given his overall is so bad. Juho Koskinen might only be 47 overall, but he has got a very good potential and he's still 15, so he will grow in the Youth Academy. Dave McColl is only 48 as well, so there's no one really here with a good overall, apart from Morgan Shaws, who's okay, but his potential isn't that great either. Uh, Dave McColl there, 75 to 93 in terms of potential. Logan McDonald, 72 to 92, but he's 48 overall, and he's 18 years of age already. So now it is time for the Sim game. Now, I say we've needed a win in this episode, and I think we're going to hopefully tactically provide ourselves with one. At home against Fleetwood, I realise it's by no means a, uh, a foregone conclusion, but we have have got one of our best sides out on the pitch so I would like to think we could beat Fleetwood Town at home in this sim especially given they're off the back of a 2-0 loss they've actually got a boulder of their own didn't realize that there was more than one and Zuzi Toko though of all people has given us the lead and Liam Trotter has now doubled that lead just after half time so two goals from unlikely sources there both of our holding midfielders for this game getting on the score sheet and that should see us grab the three points we get our first win of the of the episode unfortunately it's in a sim but they all count so at least we're back to winning ways now this one is going to be a difficult one indeed an away tie against Doncaster Rovers is how we'll potentially end this episode we'll have to wait and see whether it's a good game or not uh, but look at that front three look at how tired they are Dozel, Azoro 
and Lyle Taylor. And I played Trotter instead of Dozel at that attacking mid role, but obviously he's tired as well. So this is going to be a struggle. Well, I wanted to show you how the league table was looking. For some reason, the game has decided that only showing the bottom of the table will be acceptable. So some nice passing play to start off proceedings, and it's led to Lyle Taylor being clean through on goal, and we are 1-0 up after three minutes. How about that to kill off the nerves from the Montserrat Messi? The passing play, I was probably silent through a lot of it because I was concentrating, but Azoro, Lyle Taylor, and Andre Dozel doing so well. The ball through from Dozel into Lyle Taylor and down into the bottom corner to give us a 1-0 lead after just three minutes. Nine goals then in the league season for Lyle Taylor. Taylor, and he gives us a crucial goal potentially now against Doncaster Rovers here. Taylor there with a lovely ball through to Azoro. We're clean through again. Azoro tries to cut back though and Lawler is able to smuggle the ball away. Ah, oh, should have just gone for the shot. I, I actually just reacted so late to the fact that goal, I thought I was cutting away from the defender. I didn't even realise the goalkeeper was coming out. Just 11 minutes gone of this game and we are looking very good indeed. This has laid that off there to Andre Dozel in a very dangerous position but saved by Lawler. Still Lyle Taylor cutting back. That's now into to Andre Dozel, and that is 2-0, the goal that we needed. Andre Dozel has given us a two-goal lead. The relief is monumental inside 25 minutes. Lyle Taylor, this time turning provider, returning the favour to Dozel, who got the assist for the last goal. It's a pretty simple one as well, through the legs, actually, of the Doncaster defender. And Andre Dozel, who's been in great goal-scoring form recently. Dean Parrott's won that again. He has been absolutely unreal in terms of his defensive ability in this game so far. Dozel has now got Joel Azoro in support. Joel Azoro with the finesse, but on his weak foot. It's a very poor effort from the Swede. Dozel here down the line to Joel Azoro. Dean Parrott's made a great run here and Dozel's with him as well. It's Dean Parrott cut back there for Andre Dozel. Lovely volley and Lorenzo Vissa is there to put it in. And Lorenzo Vissa with that becomes the youngest goal scorer in the series. It's a scrappy goal. I would have rather it gone in off the volley from Andre Dozel, but it was well blocked by Doncaster. Lorenzo Vissa though was there. Right time, right, right, right place, right time. There we go. And he becomes not only the youngest goal scorer in the series at the age of just 16, he gets his first goal for Wimbledon and he becomes the first youth academy player to score a goal in this series. And we are 3 0 up. We are in dreamland now. 43 minutes gone. We just need to just not give any mercy towards Doncaster at all. Let's carry on going. Joel Azoro is now finding himself in some space and he forces a save out of Lawler. They've come out a little bit more rejuvenated of Doncaster in the second half, but Oshelar just done well to win that one back. And now here's Nzuzi Toko to use his pace down the right hand side. He's got Lyle Taylor here for support as well. Lyle Taylor has cut inside. It is still Lyle Taylor. Oh, this is far too easy for Lyle Taylor, but Lawler is able to save. Just a massive space opening up from Doncaster down the middle. Coppinger. Oh, that's a good interception from Darius Charles, but it's somehow broken here to Marquise, and it might end in a goal for Doncaster. What a double save, though, from Roy Carroll. Bodies flying across in terms of defenders, but Roy Carroll kept his composure to get a Double save. That was insane from the Northern Irish International. Coming from a chance where we were actually going forward, but Dean Parrott was blocked by the referee. Amazing ball as well. Okay, I mean, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what we can really do about that goal. The clean sheet's gone. McCulloch, I mean, I wouldn't bow after that goal, mate, but I mean, fair play on getting yourself on the score sheet. It, it, you just can't do anything about that, can you? That, that, I'm, I'm sorry, there's no way of defending that. We've, we've literally blocked the shot, and it's just... He's just decided, oh, I'm going to react immediately and just sw swivel. Zorro there, that's a great ball into Lyle Taylor, who cuts back and misses the target. The clinicality is gone. I mean, at least we've got ourselves into a position where we don't necessarily need to be ridiculously clinical. But Zorro here's got Aaron Bolger, though, running through. And it's Aaron Bolger with the shot, saved, though, by Lawler. Was a bit of a weak effort from the Irishman who got his first assist earlier on. Was looking for his first goal. Seems to have fallen apart in terms of just being convincing at the moment as a ball comes through. Oshelar just got to deal with that. How has that 
ended up at the back post. What on earth is going- What is going on? The AI is conspiring against- oh, I would actually- no, I would say that if they'd scored. They didn't score, so it can't be conspiring against me that much. But Oshalaja clears the ball against his own man. I didn't even ask him to clear the ball. Oshalaja has actually- he's on something. Who laced his Weetabix this morning? Because genuinely, he hasn't got a brain cell to put together. Right, Doncaster have chucked the entire bathroom of this one, let alone the kitchen sink. The goalkeeper's forward. It's headed over the bar. It's uh, it's come off to Silva Lopez. My whole team has forgotten how to play football in this last 15 minutes, but... I mean, Ro, uh, Carol, why are you not catching that man? Oh, Jesus Lord. Here's Hewton. Ball in. It's in off the crossbar. Marquis has scored. We've been asking for it for about 20 minutes. <laughs> How is this going to end as a one-goal victory? What are Doncaster doing? They've just chucked the goalkeeper forward because they need two goals, and now they've just spent the last two minutes celebrating. We make an absolute hash of thrashing Doncaster to the point where we didn't even thrash them in the end. The amount of chances we had to at least score four probably could have scored six in that game, quite frankly, with the amount of chances we actually had. If we completely ignore the final 15-20 minutes of that game, that was a phenomenal performance. Dozel, though, was man of the match, and another 10 rating. Uh, we haven't seen one of those at all before last episode, when Azoro got one, and then suddenly uh, Dozel's got one. He got a goal and an assist, but he must have been very good in, in other areas. 17 out of 17 passes completed for Andre Dozel. That's why he got such a good rating, along with the goal and the assist. Visser with a Nine, Parrot with a 9.1, Lyle Taylor with a 9.4. Well, two wins is apparently all it takes to flip a title race back on its head again. We're now only two points behind Blackburn. We were eight points away from them at one stage in this episode, and two wins on the bounce, and suddenly we're back within two of them. Portsmouth have got a game in hand, uh, but they are 12 points off us now. They must have lost at some point as well during this episode. In the background now, though, you'll be able to see the Hall of Fame, where all the accolades and records are kept for this series, and as I mentioned in commentary, we've got a new youngest goal scorer in the shape of Lorenzo Visser. The 16-year-old manages to grab himself a goal in that game there at the end of the episode and uh, he is now finding himself on the Hall of Fame. If you've got any other records you would like to see added, drop them down below. And also, whilst you're at it, you can now check out the vote in the top right of the screen, which will decipher who was the player of the episode for today. Once again, there should be quite a few options. There was a large spread of goal scorers in this episode, and also decent defensive performances, although I don't think Adi Deji Oshalaja will find himself on that list again for this episode. That's going to be about it, though, for today's episode and the penultimate episode of the season. Next time around, we'll be playing the final five games of the season, starting with this home tie against Scunthorpe. Depending on what happens, it might be three played games, two simmed ones, or four played games and one simmed one. That, though, is going to wrap things up, as I mentioned. If you've enjoyed this episode of Wimbledon Career, then slap a like on it, and, of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. It's been quite an enjoyable one for me, although it's slightly frustrating at times, but some decent results overall. You can also follow me on social media, though. My Twitter handle is at the official FNG. Uh, links are down below, and my Instagram. Instagram is exactly the same, but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Yo, mess push. I roll out with some monsters. Looks like your team and you watches. I you know roll with imposters. Tell by the man in the Oscars. I'm drunk of Henry and Foster's. I have a career, I am jobless. This bitch you f me so hard. I might just end up unconscious. I like girls and lingerie, especially if it is crushes. Bitch, I am the bigger picture. There is no way you can crop us.